Hi guys! In this video, we'll be looking at increasing internal energy by heat, increasing internal energy by work, first law of thermodynamics, and then we'll finish with a summary. We're going to see how we can increase internal energy of substance by heat. Remember that we define the internal energy of a system, such as an object, as the sum of the randomly distributed kinetic and potential energies in all its molecules. So this liquid, for example, is going to have potential energy due to intermolecular forces, and kinetic energy due to the motion of the molecules. We can now begin to look at ways of changing the internal energy of a system, recalling that the internal energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So we can do this by changing the kinetic and potential energies of the molecules in the system. For example, if we have two substances with different kinetic energies and different potential energies, they're going to have different internal energies. If we add heat to a system, then the kinetic energies of the molecules will increase. For example, if we look at these two gases and we add heat to the gas, the kinetic energy of the gas is going to increase, and this will increase the internal energy of the system. This is the case for solids, liquids or gases. So for all these states of matter, adding heat leads to more internal energy. Even though molecules in a solid are fixed in a rigid structure, Adding heat will still increase their kinetic energies by making them vibrate faster. So remember that the molecules in a solid are fixed in a lattice, and they can only move by vibration. If we heat a solid, the kinetic energy of the molecules will increase, because they vibrate faster. We can demonstrate the fact that adding heat increases internal energy by thinking about how we can change states from solid to liquid to gas. And here are the three states of matter for water. We know that the kinetic energies of molecules in a liquid or a gas are generally greater than that of a solid. So as we move from solid to liquid to gas, the speed of the molecules increases, and so do the kinetic energies of the molecules. Therefore, if we were to transfer from solid to liquid to gas, we must be increasing the internal energy. So changing from solid to liquid or from liquid to gas means we've added internal energy. One method of moving from solid to liquid is to add heat to raise the temperature. So when we add heat to a solid, we can change it to a liquid, and thus, by increasing the temperature, we have changed from a solid to a liquid. Adding heat to ice will make it melt into liquid water. So here you can see in a saucepan that solid ice has been melted to liquid water, and this is caused by a temperature increase due to heat being added to the ice. And adding heat to a liquid can also turn it into a gas. So if we add heat to a liquid, we increase the temperature and turn it into a gas. For example, continuing to add heat to a liquid water will eventually cause the water to boil into steam and become a gas. So here we can see that liquid is becoming a gas. And this is because there's been a temperature increase due to heat being added to the liquid. This makes it clear that we can increase the internal energy of a system by heating it to raise the temperature. So heating it increases the temperature, causing an internal energy increase. We're now going to think about another method we can use to increase internal energy, by work. We can also increase the internal energy of a system by doing work on it. So for example, if work is done to this gas inside a piston, its internal energy is going to increase. For example, if you were to compress gas with a piston, the piston would be exerting a force on the gas. So here's our gas in a piston, and there's a force acting on it. Compressing the gas by exerting a force that moves the piston a known distance means the piston must be doing work on the gas. So there's a force F, which moves the piston a known distance, which we'll call delta S, and F multiplied by delta S is equal to the work done on the gas by the piston. By conservation of energy, this energy from the piston doing work must be converted into some other form. So the work done on the gas is an energy input to the gas. And in fact, the work done by the piston on the gas goes into increasing the internal energy of the gas. So you can see that as work is done on the gas, the kinetic energy of the gas is going to increase, and therefore the internal energy of the gas increases. We're going to use what we've learned about increasing internal energy to define the first law of thermodynamics. 
we've seen that you can increase the internal energy of a system by adding heat to it or by doing work on it. This is stated in the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics states that the change of internal energy of a system is equal to the total energy transfer due to work done and heating. So the internal energy increase is equal to the energy transfer due to heat plus the energy transfer due to work done. This is effectively a statement of conservation of energy. It says that the total energy is equal to the energy we had before plus the energy input. All this really means is that if we transfer energy to a system by heat or by work, this energy goes into the internal energy. So heating a system causes an energy input to that system, as does doing work on a system. And this energy is stored as internal energy. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap by smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.